Hi guys, welcome back to Lou's Beauty Closet. If this is your first time here, hi, I'm Lou. I post weekly beauty videos. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. And if you're already subscribed, ring that bell so you don't miss out on any videos. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we are doing a first impressions on the Beauty Blender Foundation. This is new to me, came out end of last year. This is the packaging. So it's just a nice box with a bunch of writing on the back about how you should use it. And this is the product. So on one side, you've got the opaque product, 30 mils foundation. It's got a lockable mechanism to lock and unlock the pump. Then on the reverse, you've got a nice palette that is cut out perfectly to fit a Beauty Blender on there. And you've got the nice nozzle that is pointed outwards on an angle so that it actually sprays it onto the palette of the concept. So quick lowdown before we get into a demo of the product. Foundation retails for 60 Australian dollars or 40 US dollars. It is stock standard 30 mils. You buy this at your local Sephora basically. So initially they launched 32 shades and then they added a further eight shades now making the total shade range to 40 shades. I am shade 4.35W, which is one of the shades that came out with the new extension or expansion of the line. So I'm just gonna show you guys a demo of me applying this, how the foundation performed. Then we'll come back and chat some claims and some quick thoughts. Close up now, zoomed in, you can see all the bumps and whatnot in my skin. So we've got the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation. So this is the packaging it comes in. Hopefully you're not blinding you guys. And this is the foundation. So this is it on one side with the lockable pump mechanism. And then this is the side where the foundation comes out from and the palette, the mixing palette. Anyway, I've given a good shake. So we're going to open the pump and hopefully not squirt myself with my white t-shirt. So we've slid it to the other side, we've opened it and it says hold it at a 45 degree angle and pump the foundation onto the palette. So I'm just giving it a good pump because it's because it's um new. It's going to take a few pumps, and it says um how many pumps will do effect. It does. It just says build coverage as desired. So here we go. Okay, that's not a 45 degree angle either because <laughs> it's going back. So I've pumped some and just hold it this way, I guess, because it's going back into the nozzle otherwise so on uh this side of my face we'll do no primer and we'll use the damp beauty blender so i've just picked some up on the palette and i'm just going to dot it over on this side of my face so i'd say that was about two pumps eventually mm. i don't really like using um, the beauty blender for foundation i mainly use it for concealer so that's interesting that they want you to use that obviously it's beauty blender they want you to use their product with it too but i think i'm going to prefer this much better with a brush so we still have a bit on the palette so just showing you i'm probably going to dip back into that but coverage wise it is quite full and um, obviously it's not going to cover texture so those pimples that are there are still going to be there quite a significant portion of my hyperpigmentation on this cheek has actually been covered so we're just going to swipe our sponge into the rest of it and just dot that over the area that i want more coverage but like i said a sponge will always take away some of the product that's how it works that's why it gives us that flawless finish so it does absorb quite a bit brushes also absorb some but not as much and just depend depend on your application as well and the um the beauty mark i have on my forehead is almost gone too so hmm but i can still see the i can still see my pigmentation so this is the side of my face that is uncovered and this is the side that, that side that is covered so i'm actually going to do another two pumps and just build that up a bit so I'm actually going to hold it this way now okay much better now we're getting to a place where i'm much preferring the coverage i think a brush will get us here much faster it does feel quite lightweight so i am liking it the color wise i'm liking it but i really want to see what it looks like once it has set because foundations usually do oxidize once they set into your skin a bit more i do like this mechanism though and it's not as messy as i thought it was going to be the only thing is you'd probably have to wipe it down quite quite quickly afterwards and I'm scared of foundation getting clogged around that pump, that nozzle. Now on the left side of my face, I'm going to be using my Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer. I'm using my favorite, my Hourglass Vanish Foundation Brush. 
so it does dry quite quickly on the palette so we're going to just i'll just show you guys i'm just going to do another pump another two pumps you can see the difference already i reckon the obviously you guys can actually see that um pigmentation there is still still quite prominent but you can already see the difference in how quickly you achieve the coverage level that they're advertising so i'm just going back into the residual on the palette and i'm just applying it to areas that i need so that's this is usually how i would apply my foundation brush is usually quicker when you have the nice brushes you get good finishes you don't get streakiness you just have to play around with the different brushes but i find i just go in dot them wherever i need it and then blend it out so that bit there is still peaking Usually I don't mind if some of it is, but if this is like a going out kind of situation, sometimes I do like to just have everything covered. But I actually really like the finish of this foundation with the brush. I just think for me, for us to get to this level on this side of our face, we had to go in, we had to use like four of the pumps of the thing. And when I'm saying four pumps, you might be saying, oh my gosh, that's so much foundation you're using. The pumps are really not that massive. They're really small pumps. So... I think either way you're going to be using a lot. It does dry quickly, so I would say only pump, maybe maybe do one pump at a time and go from there. Two of these pumps that I've done, that's all I've done, two of these pumps. I'm actually really happy with the coverage. So I would say it is full coverage. With the Beauty Blender, again, I'll say it's medium full, but buildable, and you can get to full coverage, you just have to build it. I do like it. Might take one more pump and go overboard. Do one more pump and just dot it in some areas. So. Oh, I like it. What do you guys think? The finish is actually really nice. And it's giving me like some radiant vibes, but I think that's because it's still quite wet. So I'll just let it set a bit. So left side of my face, we used um, primer and we used a brush to apply the foundation. So we used about two, two, three pumps basically all in all, but I didn't really need the third pump. Maybe two and a half pumps will get me there. On the right side of my face, we went in bare, bare skin and we used a damp beauty blender as advised on the product packaging. And we used about four pumps all up to get to this level all right so this is the foundation on me it's now set i've set it with some my usual powders i've done the rest of my makeup some claims i'm just looking at my notes i've just got some brand claims it is actually got a really long name so it's actually called the beauty blender bounce liquid whip Longwear foundation a super long unnecessary name but anyway <laughs> so they claim it to be a full coverage foundation they claim it to be a weightless liquid whip foundation so i'm assuming i'm interpreting that as being lightweight they say that it has a velveteen matte finish and they said that it wears for up to 24 hours so whole day's coverage i don't know who's wearing foundation for that long but you do as you wish they say that it has white birch extract that helps soothe and brighten the skin and it has hyaluronic acid that supports natural moisture and helps prep the skin for a smooth canvas. So basically they're claiming that it's long wearing, lightweight, smooth texture and even tone and that it gives you a nice smooth matte finish. First impressions for me, the packaging, great. Love the innovation, love the creativity with it. The fact that you have a lockable pump is fantastic. The fact that you can actually see the product too is great. And this palette idea alone is what sold so many of us on this product. The fact that you don't need to take your mixing palette with you or put it on the back of your hand. You can essentially get mess-free application. Love it. So this is going to be great for traveling. This is going to be great for makeup artists. It's going to be great for the everyday person as well who wants to put foundation on in the morning. You just pump it on here, pick it up, boom, 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 apply it. You're good to go. I appreciate the thought that has gone into this product and the like packaging and the creation of this, this sort of aspect of the product. So for me, and then putting the foundation on and applying it as well as in the video, you guys saw that I did one side with primer and using a brush, one side just bare skin using the sponge that they recommend. I definitely prefer the side with the brush. For me, that's how I prefer to apply my foundations, especially being full coverage. I found that it did hold up more so on the brush. The sponge required a bit more building up. For me, I'll definitely be using it with the brush. I really like it. Liked my shade, liked the way it matched me. It set quite nicely. So my shade was 4.35 and that was one of the extension shades. So we'll touch on that in a second. So generally, foundation is a yay. Obviously, I'm going to have to use it more often, more frequently and see a lot you know later down the line if i still feel the same way but just general first impressions i actually quite like it i'm enjoying it like the finish like the coverage and it does feel quite lightweight and i love the whole packaging concept and the ease of use 
So that's a plus. Now it's 40 shades. There are 10 shades for each category. So you've got 10 fair, 10 medium, or 10 fair, 10 medium, light medium, 10 tan and 10 deep. It'd be lovely for them to exchange, ex extend it more to maybe 15 to 20 in each. That'd be great. Pricing wise, it's spot on with the market comparison. 30 mil foundation, usually really entry mid range, mid range foundation entry, entry level is about $50 upwards. $60 is priced really well for the product, for all the packaging as well. You've got to consider all the packaging, gizmos and stuff they've put in it. Just some quick thoughts because there's been a lot of drama. People have done dedicated videos on this. The initial launch and the debacle and the drama that happened with that wasn't too happy. More so from the brand, they released the 32 shades. It was very skewed towards the medium, medium fair sort of complexions. There was just a few shades on one end of the spectrum, a few shades on the other, but the deep, deep spectrum wasn't really catered to well at all. Remember the PR release for this and seeing everyone get their packages, they did a really elaborate packaging for PR and it was a massive sponge. Look, I mean, it sounded cool. It looked like a cool idea, but just the waste and just everything. They said everyone, every single foundation and it was a massive sponge. They put the foundations and we were like, is that it? And you're watching this in like, surely they're going to pull out more shades and it just stopped. And then when people called the brand out on it and pulled them up on it, the response they gave wasn't really satisfactory in my opinion. But anyway, I said, look, we need to give companies the benefit of the doubt sometimes. And so they went back, they come back and they developed more shades. They said, look, they always wanted to do 40 shades. They just, these eight shades weren't fully developed at the time. For me, I find that I think companies need to consider consumer impact and the way the percep consumer perception as well. It's not really nice being an afterthought, considering this has always been the trend in the industry. It's not nice being an afterthought. It's not nice that you release a product that's unfinished, basically. So if you know you've got eight more shades in developing, rather than making a cash grab, I guess, or trying to recoup your profits now, why not just wait until the whole, whole range is complete, then launch it. You get better consumer percep perception, you get better sales, you don't turn people off. A lot of people were turned off from the product, so regardless of them launching the extension, they weren't going to buy it anyway. But for me, I find, and I actually did a big rant about this on Instagram, but I find that we also need to, when companies recognise a mistake that they've made based on whether it's their own volition, based on consumer response, we need to recognise that as well. We, other companies are looking at this and are deciding how they're going to move forward. We need to be encouraging the, the trend and the, I guess, behaviour and the standard to be launch your shade range from the beginning, fully considering all ranges, all skin tones, all sides of the spectrum. So that needs to be the message. But obviously, if we're just berating companies when they do do a poor sh um, initial launch and then they've realized that and redevelop and add more be careful how we respond to that so for me i didn't like that people were just completely slating them saying you know it's too little too late yes it's late but we shouldn't really dismiss them and say oh my gosh it's late i don't want to try it i've seen makeup artists use this product rave and makeup artists of different skin tones and complexions and that have a really wide array of clients of different diverse backgrounds rave about this product why should i exclude myself from it just because they had a crappy launch so i think they know and they realize and yes it's hard to tell if it's genuine from a brand or not but i think we just need to be tread carefully a bit obviously it's your own you know prerogative you do use your due diligence but i think you know a lot of companies are watching this and they will see this and some companies may just say look and i mean that's their own problem and that's you know not progressive of them but they may just say oh, that's it, we're not going to bother anyway, because even if we do, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. If we do launch a shade range and they're not happy, they're going to complain. And then if we add to it, they're still going to complain. So, you know, I'm not saying don't complain about it, but just, we just need to think about how we respond when companies fix a mistake. I know that part of it is people are saying they're fixing it just because, the, um, you know, of the money or just because they're because of the perception and everyone's called them out on it. But that's what we want, isn't it? And I think sometimes people forget that we actually want to affect change and we want companies to, to be extending shades and changing the culture in the beauty community. So anyway, ran over, just gonna leave it there. It sucked, the initial launch, they got slated about it. Everyone went for them and came for them, I guess, and they fixed it. So hey, let's look at this, let's evaluate this, let's give them constructive criticism and encourage other companies to actually really think about what they're doing and then launch it, you know? That's, that's, my, that's my sort of conclusion to everything. What are your thoughts on the foundation, whether you've tried it or not? Is it something you're going to pick up? Have you just completely cancelled them or skipped them? Love to chat in the comments. What was your thoughts on the launch and how the brand handled the launch and the 
the um, discourse and the feedback from it and how they've improved on it. Have you completely cancelled Beauty Blender or are you willing to give them a chance? What is your stance on the diversity discussion and debate? Love to chat and have healthy conversation in the comment section below, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in on your way out. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell if you're already subscribed so you don't miss out on any videos. Can't wait to see you back here again, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.